Hey everyone, my name is Dave and welcome to the new and very temporary shop here for NTD Racing. It's where we live right now and in about two weeks we're moving about a quarter mile that way to a bigger shop, new garage, we'll be doing all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to show you what I do in the shop to prepare it and epoxy floors and all that kind of stuff. But today what we're doing is getting ready for the Baja 1000, one of the big parts of the box, probably bigger than the race truck, is the chase trucks and the chase teams. And we've been using this trailer now for a couple of years, towing around Honcho. And the problem with this trailer is it doesn't have brakes, uh, which you know isn't too bad when you're uh, straight and level. I rely on the brakes of the Tundra to stop the whole thing. But when you're going down hills, man, you really got to plan it out. So today what we're going to do is we're going to at least put a set of brakes on one of the axles on this trailer, maybe two later on, but we're going to try it out with one of the axles today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you everything you need to do in case you have a trailer like this with 3,500 pound axles, what you need to look for to see if you can do it and what is involved in putting electric brakes on one of these trailers. So if you want to do it, this is your one-stop shop. I will put a link for all of the things that I use in the description below. So if you want something like that, you can click on that link and you'll find it in Amazon. And I am an affiliate with Amazon. So so if you click on that link, it doesn't cost you anything extra. I get a little bit of a commission and it helps us pay for stuff for our race team. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to this build. Okay, so this is the kit that we're putting on my trailer today. About $245 what I paid for it. And I, I see the prices fluctuate on this all the time. Just right now, it seems like everything is a little bit more expensive. These trailer parts come from Southwest Will and they're purchased on Amazon. And they have a video which this guy shows how everything is packed in there. And I will verify that the packaging I thought was outstanding. And it came with everything. It came with the lug nuts, the dust covers, new uh, caps that go over your, uh, you know, the nut and the cotter pin and all that kind of stuff. So a really well packed kit. I have other links in there that show how other people have put this kit together, and then also specifically how you go through and adjust it once it's all together. Let me show you some of the things I learned as I was putting this kit onto my trailer. All right, whenever I'm doing anything, I like to understand why it's doing what it's doing. And, and maybe you already know, but I didn't. And for those who also don't know, this is how this thing works. And I think it's really cool. What you have over here is you got your, your brake drum and then you got your brakes over here. These are actually physically bolted to the axle and they don't rotate and the brake drum does rotate this is obvious to some people it wasn't completely obvious to me is how it all works and where do you get braking pressure from so you push your brakes in your car electrical signal goes to that little brake box you have and it sends a signal back to your brakes and this is where all the magic happens this thing right here is actually a magnet and what happens is, and here's a piece of metal, and you can see as I, as I contact that, it's not grabbing it at all because the magnet's not energized. But it's as soon as I run a, a 12 volt through here, and it doesn't matter if it's which way it is, it becomes a magnet, and all of a sudden, and now that thing grabs this piece of metal. So why does that work in the car? Well, when you hit your brakes and it sends the electrical signal through here, this thing becomes a magnet. Now it grabs the inside of your drum, and it starts running up against the inside of your drum with this friction surface. Now that friction surface creates a moment arm and starts pulling back on this camera here. And it pulls this thing back. And what that thing does is it rocks this and expands out these brake drum pads. Those brake drum pads engage the outside of your brake drum and then give you braking pressure. I think that's pretty cool. This one says right hand on it or RH. It's gonna go on the right hand side of the trailer. The other one says LH and it'll go on the left hand side of the trailer. Let's go ahead and get the old ones apart and start putting these things on the right side. The first First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to go ahead over to my bench right now and I'm going to put the wires on. I got to add some heat shrink uh, extended wires on here. I'll make sure they're going to be long enough to go all the way to our box. And the other side, I'm going to make sure it's long enough to ground out to the trailer. It'll be a lot easier to do that on the bench as opposed to once it's underneath the trailer. All right, just in case you're interested, this is how I do wiring. I know everyone's got their own techniques, but this is how I do it. And if you haven't done a lot of wiring, and you're looking for the correct tools or good tools for that, uh, if you go to my Amazon store, I actually have all the wiring tools that I use there. These are some vice grip strippers, uh, and they do a really good job of any gauge. They strip wires really quickly. Um, you can set how deep you want it to go. I, you know, generally, I want about three quarters of an inch on these this larger gauge wires we're kind of shooting for. All right, and what I've got here is my heat shrink. This is a special, not the, I don't know, it's not too expensive, but it's not the cheap stuff. This is called a three to one heat shrink, which means that from the diameter that it's at right now, it is gonna try to shrink down to a third of its size, which does a really nice job of just totally grabbing the wires. Another cool thing about this heat shrink 
is that it's got an adhesive on the inside. So when you heat it up, it activates that adhesive and glues itself to whatever it wants. Now to connect these wires, what I do is I basically will make a cross somewhere about halfway in between the two wires. And you'll see, I'll just kind of twist the wires together around each other. And I'll try to kind of keep that as compact as I can. If you get this too thick, sometimes the heat, once you solder it, the heat shrink won't slide back over it. So I'll be a little bit careful to do that. And then I've got my solder iron. This is from Amazon. I got it on my page also. And this is literally the best one I've ever found. I want to say it's one of the cheapest ones I found too. It's like 20 bucks. But man, it does a nice job of getting up to temperature and heating up. A lot of the other ones you just find you just don't heat up hot, hot enough. And it won't do it. So what I'll do is now what I'm doing is I'm trying to get that copper wire as hot as I can. Because what I'll do is once it gets hot enough, I'll bring my solder. And this is like a resin core solder. I think that's also on my Amazon page for all that. And I'll just kind of touch it to the to the, the iron. And then I'll touch it. Once it starts melting in, I'll start basically letting it flow right into the um, into the uh, the wire and you'll kind of see how it infused the wire there and it's all the way around on both sides uh, really nicely and that's a really good joint that's going to carry all the electricity you want through there and then i'll just go ahead and slide the heat shrink over make sure it's grabbing both sides i got that the solder part in the middle now the heat shrink is going to grab both of the electrical wire conduit or the whatever you call it the plastic around it hit it with my heat gun i'm using a porter cable it works pretty good um to heat this thing up and what you'll notice is as i heat it it shrinks around that another thing is is that the adhesive will kind of ooze out just slightly on both sides and you can kind of see how that just almost like just glues itself to all those wires and that will not come off for a long time that'll be a good connection uh, on there for a long time sometimes i'll kind of massage it in there a little bit just to make sure that connection is really good and there you go i think a nice clean wire and that'll hold on for a long time There's probably a better way of doing this, but I, I'm pretty sure my dad taught me how to do this a long time ago. When I, was a, I remember watching him do it and how to pack grease into these, these bearings. <laughs> yeah, man, I may have put too much on here, but uh, basically the gist is, is just to roll the bearings and force the grease down inside the, uh, the bearing. Again, I think my dad taught me how to do this. And I'm 50 years old and I'm still scared of him, so I'm not going to call him out on that. You can if you want, but I'm not. There we go. You got the races inside the drum. I'm going to go ahead and just put more grease inside the race. I'm going to try to make sure I keep the inside of this drum clean and don't get any of the... Because that's where the whole braking action is going to happen inside there. There we go. Let me get the big bearing, drop that inside of its bearing race, put the cap or the, uh, the, the grease seal there. Well, if you have a trailer, whether it's an RV or car hauler like this one or something like that, this tool right here is a total must have. It just really makes lifting the one of the tires off the ground really easy using the uh, one of the other tires. And you'll find a link for uh, this thing again on our Amazon store or in the in the description below. All right, I just wanted to go through some of my um, takeaways from this job, and, and the first one was that it just wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be, uh, and I kind of think this is a job that anybody could do. Now that being said. I'll have a chance to test this as we take this thing out to Mexico in a couple days. And so if I have a video with a bunch of smoke billowing out from my axles later on, then I'll tell you it didn't work uh, so well. But uh, I was using a dead blow hammer to get this dust cover off. Uh, pretty easy to do. And I think I was able to take it off and it wasn't damaged. I could use it again. Getting the cotter pin out, uh, I make it look a little bit easy here. It probably took me really about five minutes because I think it just was all kind of mangled up. So. Uh, just take your time. If you need to cut the other end, you can do that. But if you bend it around, it'll eventually work. The hardware on the inside, just being the fact that it's greased, uh, I didn't have to use a tool to take that large nut off and basically get the axle off. Everything was pretty good on the inside. Grease usually protects stuff from any kind of corrosion and that kind of stuff. Uh, 
besides that, just a little bit of cleaning off, make sure there's no other debris I'm leaving in there so that all the grease that goes in is gonna be uh, new. Now putting the brake on, it's kind of interesting how mechanically this works. It, it basically fits on there really snugly. And then the bolts that go through that you're gonna put nuts on the other side, basically locate it and kind of prevent it from basically rotating it about this really robust shaft. So how tight do these nuts go on in the back? I, I couldn't find anything either on the webpage for the, those brakes or in anybody else's videos. So here's what I kind of came up with is first is I'm going to basically pull those, put those things on with the lock washers that are provided. And I'm going to kind of alternate sides such that I seat it completely in. And then once it's seated, then I'll start tightening it down just with this, uh, you know, open air or box and wrench that I've got here in the video. You know, you know, the size of the bolts, about 30 foot pounds of torque is, I think about what I'm putting on these bolts, just kind of with some experience from on there, 30 to maybe to 40. Uh, not too tight, but just enough to crush that lock washer and allow the lock washer to do its job. As long as those nuts don't back themselves off, I think it'll be good. But just, you know, I, I was shooting for about 30 foot pounds and that's not the official, but that's what I use. Sliding the drum brake on, that thing went on really easily. And then just the hardware kind of goes on in, in the opposite order that it came off. The bearing in there, just make sure there's plenty of grease on there, the washer. And then as far as getting this nut to kind of basically preload up those wash, those uh, bearings, how tight did I get this? Uh, I used some channel locks and I tightened it all the way down and you hit a definite, there's no resistance and then immediately you kind of hit some resistance, you hit the edge of the bearings. And at that point, I back it off just until the point I can get this cotter uh, pin in. And that seemed to be just about right. And again, we'll have about a thousand miles, 2000 miles to test this, uh, you know, towing our truck around. So we'll see how well uh, that works, but and I'll let you know, but I think it's gonna be pretty good. Now I add grease in here just before I put the, uh, the dust cover on. And then, like I said, there are two dust covers or grease fitting covers in the kit. There's this one right here and another one that doesn't have that little plastic thing. Now that plastic thing is something that you would put on there if you have a grease, you know, I think they call them a zerk fitting on the inside of that. And that's why you would use one versus the other. And then finally back to just electrical wiring. So I'm cleaning up an area to make sure that I have a really good electrical connection. And then again, here's some of the tools that I use that are on my Amazon page. And these are the things that, that I have found just don't fail me. I use them for our lighting and that kind of stuff while we're racing in the Baja 1000. And those are just some no fail points. You can't lose your lighting. You can't you lose your electrical. And likewise, you can't lose your brakes. Otherwise you just basically repack some new bearings on here if your electrical fails. So I'm using these eyelets that I'm going to crimp on there and I will no kidding use uh, some quarter inch bolts, some nylock nuts. Uh, I will complete the job just by spray painting it a couple times to resist any kind of corrosion. Doing these things just make sure that your electrical connections aren't the weak point in the whole build. Right, you can hear it. The uh, brakes are just slightly dragging on the inside. That's what you want to have. So I think it's probably pretty darn close to being adjusted right. I'm going to give it a test drive before I reach around the, into the back side, like I showed you, to adjust the the, uh, the brake pads. But besides that, I think it's going to be pretty good. Now it's just time to get to the wiring. All right, so here's the junction box that comes with that new cable. And you basically just need to connect to these wires. Well, which ones do you do? Well, it shows you here on this strip which ones you do. And starting from the left, we will have a ground. There won't be a one that goes to the battery. We won't have an aux reverse. But we do have the left turn, the tail lights, the right turn, and now the electrical brakes also on there. Now, the way that those will get uh, wired up to an old four-prong connector, which I just cut off. And what I had is I had a ground which I think was white. I can't remember which color it was. Yeah, it was white that went on there. And then I had a brown, a yellow, and a green. And now I think these are probably standard, but this is what mine was. The green was my right turn. The yellow was my left turn. And the brown is my tail light. So now I just got to go in there and basically wire those into this. And it should all work out just perfect. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and wire it in. I'm probably going to wire it in right over here underneath and on the back side of this just so if i get rocks and spray off my tires it won't hit this box directly and it'll be kind of underneath everything maybe out of the weather just a little bit so that's where i'm gonna go ahead and put that thing in right now
All right, a few more cleanup items here for things that you saw me using in the video today. And the first is, is we have an Amazon store. And like I said, uh, nothing here costs you anything more, but we do get a little commission and it helps us pay for shocks and tires and all those things for our race team. Some of the things that we do on a race team, you'll see all kinds of different links here for stuff. I do a lot with plasma tables and I show you some of the parts I use with that. Some other cool stuff we have, but if you go over to my electrical section, I show you all of the tools that I use today and I, mean, I do a lot of wiring. And these are just like my go-to tools and some of the things they are not necessarily expensive, but they're the ones that I use all the time and I find uh, never fail me. So that's where you find those. A couple other specific things that we use today here is this wire harness. I think I paid about $31 for this harness and it comes with this junction box and the ones that come without the junction box really weren't much different, you know, if you just got the, the plug. So, and I really like the way that junction box went together and cleaned everything up really nicely. Uh, besides that, this trailer aid, man, I'll tell you what, it blew my mind how well this thing works. It works great as a chalk and it also works great to pull that wheel off of the ground. You can imagine if you're out there trying to find some way to jack your trailer up, this thing does it super easy and you saw me uh, use that thing. And then there again are the brakes. So uh, hopefully you'll find some stuff on there that maybe you'll like and uh, we sure do appreciate any support we get with our Amazon store. I'm not sure how you found this video, but if you like what you saw here, this is what we do. We build chase trucks, race trucks. We have a speeder. We have all kinds of cool stuff that we build on this channel. I hope you will choose to watch us in the future. Please consider hitting the like and subscribe, ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. That always helps us out. We sure do appreciate it. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care of yourself.